Hello, in this video I want to go over a couple of these uh, questions in chapter 4.2. So looking at 4.2, uh, how to use StatKey to compute a peak value directly for us. So in this example we're looking at a hypothesis test where the null hypothesis is P, some population proportion is 0.5, and the alternative hypothesis would be P is less than 0.5. So I like to imagine this might be like testing to see if a coin is fair, you know, 50% odds. And you have sample data. Basically, if you flip a coin 100 times, and you get 38 tails. Would that be enough evidence to say that well, maybe this coin is not fair? Okay, and this n right here is just, that just tells us the sample size that we have right here, 38 over 100. Okay, so we're going to test for a single proportion. I'm going to go over to Stacky. Test for single proportion. Actually, I'm going to go back a second. Just as a quick reminder, the bootstrap commons intervals, this here is for chapter 3. And then chapter 4, we're doing hypothesis tests, test of a single proportion. Right, I want to do a couple things at first. I want to enter my uh, data. So the data in this case is your p hat, 38 over 100. 38 over 100. Click OK. Make sure that your uh, null hypothesis is correct. P equals 0.5. Right here, P equals 0.5. That's the automatic setting, but you might have different problems. We have to change this. So make sure that null hypothesis is P equals 0.5 in this example. And I would say we're going to generate samples. Do at least 1,000. I like doing 2,000 samples. So let's get a whole bunch of samples so it looks like we have that nice uh, bell-shaped symmetric distribution. And notice right here I have my original sample. And now when I look at the problem, the alternative hypothesis is a less than, less than 0.5. And my sample data, 0.38, is also, if we look at the x-axis here, that is less than 0.5. So if we're looking at a less than, I'm going to click left tail, and I want to change this bottom entry to whatever that sample data is. In this case, it's 0.38. Click on 0.38. Click OK. And my p, uh, p value is right here. This is the proportion of all of these samples that got a 38% you know, or less. So it would be 0 0.013. Okay, I'm going to look at one more of these problems. I think it's the next one. Yeah, number 18. So a similar question. We want to uh, compute a p-value. And I've got the same exact uh, null hypothesis that we're assuming uh, you know, a fair coin, 50% chance. But now the alternative is a not equal 0.5. So it's a slightly different scenario. I'm going to go back here, reset plot, edit data. This is now 42. 42 out of 100 is the data. That's your p hat. I want to generate, I'll do at least one, but one or 2,000 samples. So all of these samples, notice, represent flipping a coin 100 times. So it's like flipping a coin 100 times, but doing that 2,000 times. What's different on this problem, that alternative hypothesis is not equal. So if you see a not equal, the null or alternative hypothesis, you want to click on two tail. So less than left tail, greater than right tail, not equal two tail. Now I still need to go into the bottom right here, the x-axis, and enter in my sample data, the 0.42. And I have two options, but notice 0.42 is less than the null of 0.5. So I'm going to go to the same spot as before, enter that right here to be 0.42. Click OK. And now the main difference on this one is instead of um, the p-value being 0 0.076, the p-value is going to be double this, or we're going to add these two together. So 0.076 plus 0 0.077. And that would be 0.153. So with not equals as your alternative hypothesis, 
don't forget to click on the two tail and you're going to add both of these tail values together to get the p-value. So you do want to make a note, if you're going through these problems right now during the video, you might get a different value. If I were to reset the plot, generate, say, another 2,000, click on two-tail, change this bottom to 0 0.42. Notice I get different values right here, 0 0.069, 0 0.069. Because of the randomization of these bootstrap samples, you're not going to get the same thing every time. And that's why I did this in class the other day, and I got 0.064 on both sides instead of 0.069. But the main thing is make sure to add these two values together, whatever you get on your stat key, and that is going to be your p-value. And for these problems, uh, the Wally Plus does take a range of the answers because there is not one specific p-value that works.